Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Tonight I am working with the Sculptform S30. This was provided to me by geekbuying.com for review, but before I give my review, I like to run it through a number of tests and work on it with a few projects. And so that's what we're doing tonight. And I've pulled in some scrap wood from my workshop and we're going to be using that along with some designing work to make some custom magnets. I thought I'd show you how I go about making a couple different styles in case you wanna be able to create these. They make great gifts, they can be good sellers for your shop, so we're going to jump right into that, so stay tuned. So what we have here is just a small, this is about a three quarter of an inch circle, and then I have a backer that's slightly smaller, and in the center we have a six millimeter or quarter inch hole. And so the idea is that the magnet is going to get glued into here and be flush with one surface, and then the opposite surface gets glued onto the back of your magnet. And then as you see here, we just have a couple of cat faces that we're going to engrave on the top and this is where you can customize it with your own logo with letters uh, you can make a nice little spelling board with magnet letters and numbers for your kids uh, really your imagination is what drives you on this so we are going to go ahead and make a couple of these small cat magnets for my wife and uh, get them cut out on the laser so let's jump into that now Okay, so we've got our magnet pieces cut out. And so what I'm gonna be using is I have these quarter inch or six millimeter uh, neodymium magnets. And I've sized these so that this magnet should fit just in there with just a snug fit that the glue can adhere to it. So we're gonna be placing those in there and then we're going to be gluing these on top. So uh, my glue of choice is gonna be um, some CA glue. Um, this is some stuff, some from Starbond, um, really decent glue. It's available online and in many retailers. So I'll have a link down below for this. The process is very simple. I've got some wax paper down to protect our work area. And I'm using thick because this gives, uh, the, the medium and thin are just a little too, they'll soak in a little too much. This will give a little bit of a gap filling feature. So we're just going to kind of place some glue inside the ring. We get it all around that ring. And then I'm going to take my stack of magnets and I'm going to push this all the way down and then pull that top one out. Oh, got to be careful of that happening. I'm just going to slide this off. There we go. Now that should leave the magnet basically flush, but we can push it down on our board. And we can take our accelerator, just hit that real quick, and that should tear up that CA glue right away. Now we're gonna let that um, CA glue, or the, let that accelerator kind of evaporate off while we work on the second one. Okay, now that the accelerator has evaporated off, we're gonna make sure that we wanna take the flat side, keep that down on both of them. And we want that to be the part that hits the magnet, or that hits the, uh, metal surface, so your fridge or whatever. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be gluing these to the back and you're gonna to wanna to roughly center them. I've just left this so that you have a little bit of a lip to grab. These magnets can be quite strong. So I wanted to give you just a little bit of extra room to be able to grab that. That's up to you, you can make them straight. Um, this is just a inspirational video on how to maybe design some. So here again, we're just gonna take some glue. We're gonna put it on this ring here. And then if you want, you can actually hit this surface with just a little bit of accelerator, but then you gotta be quick and place this exact because that will grab in about two to three seconds. So just center it as best you can, push and hold. And that should be stuck. We'll set that off to the side, let that cure, do the same thing on this one. And that is one small set of little button magnets. 
All right, jumping back into Lightburn, I'll show you what we're doing for the second one. So this is just simply my workshop logo. I've got the whole logo set to fill, and then I used the offset tool uh, for the outer edge to bring this out to give me a border to cut. And then I don't know that we're going to use these, but we're going to go ahead and cut out those spacers again. This is just a six millimeter hole with about a qu uh, quarter inch outline around it to provide a backer. So you could glue that on the back, or we may actually just glue the magnet straight onto the back of this one. So once again, we'll jump this over to the laser, get this cut out, and then uh, get to gluing it up together. Now this section is sped up, but it is a good spot to show you the effects of flood fill. And what flood fill does is it will try to find the most efficient path as long as it is a vector image to minimize your white, white space travels. So it's going to fill sections and then come back and fill other areas as it can do it in the most efficient manner. But definitely use your preview feature within Lightburn to check the time it's going to take and the path it's going to take before committing to it. In this clip, as it's finishing up the job, you'll notice that it is outlining all of my engravings, and that's an option where you can have it do a fill and then an, a line around the outside, and that can just add a little crispness to the engraving, getting something to play around with. And then there you just noticed it switched to a cut job, and hopefully you heard it also turned the air on. One of the nice features of the Sculptfun S30 series is the automatic air feature controlled by Lightburn. Okay, so we went ahead and cut this out of some cherry wood that I uh, milled down in my shop. Uh, cherry does do a nice job of engraving, as you can see here. So that's one uh, I like to save scraps and use for small things like this. Now we could do the same thing. We could use these spacers and glue them onto the back and have them stood off from the, uh, the uh, surface a bit. Or you can use different size magnets. Now you could glue them straight on and these are the size we used on the other ones, but then you see we also have some thinner, and these are more like 16th and 32nd, or more like one and two millimeter magnets. Now, if you're gonna glue these straight on to the wood, I would recommend using something a little stronger, like epoxy, and it'll just have a stronger hold onto both the magnet and the wood. So let's go ahead and get some of these glued on and see how it looks. All right, so as I said, I'm gonna go ahead and use some epoxy. This is some five minute epoxy. This is a two part epoxy, so we're gonna to have to mix this together. And just to help encourage these magnets to stick, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be putting three of them on here and I'm just going to kind of roughen up the surface just a little bit where I'm gonna be sticking these down just to give the glue something a little more to hold on to because this is a fairly smooth surface that I've got on here. So we just kind of wanna rough it up just a little bit in the three areas where we are going to be sticking our magnets. So we're going to be putting one here, here, and here. And then the other thing I like to do is I like to make sure that my magnets are all facing the same polarity. So what I do is I'm going to take a marker and on one end of my stack I'm just going to put a little dot and I'm going to keep that dot up the whole time as I'm gluing these down and I'm just going to mark the center locations where I'm going to be putting those magnets all right now we can go ahead and mix this right on our wax paper here So this is two parts. You want to get two equal parts as best you can. And then you want to mix this thoroughly. Now the key is, once you start mixing this, that's when your cure time clock sets. So we've got about five minutes to get this all mixed up get our magnets in place with the epoxy set on it. So you do want, you don't want to rush mixing this because you do want it uh, really well combined, but you also want to keep your cure time in mind. Once we've got that mixed up, I'm going to put a drop 
our first spot, about the size of a magnet. Again, holding that black dot up, I'm going to slide one off, keeping my orientation correct, and then just push that into the epoxy, set it down firmly, and it'll make a, make a nice fillet around with the, uh, the excess epoxy. So let's go ahead and do that on the other two spots. And then we'll let this cure. I like to just put this, glob this in there around the toothpick. And then once that is hardened up, you'll know that those are hardened up. So we'll be back once that's done. Okay, as you see now, this is firmly encased in the epoxy. And so it's still slightly gel. And this will take actually a few hours to truly harden. But at this point, they're really not gonna move off of here. So we have them stuck in place on the back of our magnet. It's only going to stick out roughly a sixteenth of an inch from our surface, and we have our cool logo magnet. So there's a second way of doing it, and uh, hope that inspires you. Right, well, there you have it. We have a couple different types of magnets. We have the small cat magnets as well as the logo one with the magnets glued right on back. So I hope this was informative to you. I hope it inspires you to try some of your own and uh, gives you a good use to use up some of that scrap wood as well. I have links down below to both the machine where you can get that and uh, the materials are more scraps but uh, definitely the magnets and the adhesives used in this video. Uh, some of those will be affiliate links and they do go to support this channel. So uh, no pressure on that, but it does help me to create more content for you. I appreciate you stopping by. If you have any questions or comments about this video or anything else you've seen in my shop, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I try to get back to those as quickly as I can. And if you like what you saw, go ahead and hit that like button. It does help the channel. And if you'd like to see what I'm doing next time in my shop, hit that subscribe button. I do post videos about every week on anything going on in my workshop. I hope you found this informational or at least entertaining and I hope you can get out into your workshop and make something. We'll see you next time.